OK, so now we know how to import our data into R, we can start computing some summary or descriptive statistics. This video will go through a range of different packages that can be used for this. Um, in the end, it comes down to exactly what you're looking for and your personal preference. OK, so first of all, we're going to set our working directory uh, from the R script and load in our data, dataset1. OK, and the first package we're going to discuss is the psych package. So as always, if you haven't used this package before, you'll need to use the uh, install.packages command to do so first, and then use the library command to open it up. So you'll see a slightly different notation here. So here we have the name of the package, two colons, and uh, the name of the function. And the reason for this is to specify that we'd like the describe function specifically from the psych package. So uh, that's because uh, there is another package uh, which also has a describe function. So this is just to make sure that we know which particular command we're using. So this one is quite simple. All we need to do is put the name of the data set in the parentheses, control and enter to run that. And we can open this window to make it slightly larger. So this is quite a nice, simple, easy to read summary. We've got a range of summary statistics across the top and all of our variables. Okay, um, You might want to break this down by group. This is a very useful thing to know how to do. So the syntax for that is here. So we use describe by from the same package. So we're going to describe uh, dataset1 and the group we're going to use is dataset1 group. Okay, and control enter to run that. And we get a very similar output, but this time, as you can see, it's split by group. So we've got group one at the top and group two at the bottom. And this is just a very nice way of organizing the data. Okay, secondly, we have the past text package. So we'll load this up, so it's ready to use. And the function we're going to use is stat.desk. So again, we need to put the name of the data set in here. And here is our output. Now, you, you might notice something different going on here. So there are many more decimal places. And we also have this funny E symbol here, which stands for scientific notation. If you'd like to turn that off in R and just have the pure number, uh, the way to do that is options, Psi pen, and then just set it to 999. So we run that. If we run this passex command again, we'll see this time that we don't get the scientific notation. Um, I will note as well that there isn't an easy way without knowing a bit more about our syntax of how to split this by group. So it's rather limited compared to the other functions that we'll be discussing. Okay, next is the hmisc package. So again, we'll load this up. And see, this is the reason for specifying which package we'd like it to come from. So we have describe, which is the same as uh, describe from psych. So we'll specify that we want describe from the hmisc package. And again, we put in the name of our data set and run that. So this output is slightly different. It's more sparse. Um, and personally, I'm, I'm less of a fan of this uh, compared to some of the other packages. But a lot of the same information is still there. OK, uh, let's move on to uh, desk tools. OK, so the main function we're going to use from this package is desk here. And again, we'll specify where it comes from. So we'll type in the name of the data set and run that. So you'll notice that this one is much more comprehensive than the ones we've looked at so far. Uh, and also now we have some graphs. OK, so if we just go back into the input, we'll see uh, a range of different things here. So. Um, it starts with, it goes variable by variable. So one is the first variable, which is a code, and it tells you how, how R is dealing with that. And it gives you uh, a couple of statistics about each one. We've got a dichotomous variable here, um, also known as categorical or factor. And then further down, we have the, uh, the numeric variables. Okay. So this function will also produce a range of graphs. So if we cycle backwards through these, and go back to the first one, we'll see a range of different things plotted um, depending on the type of variable that we're dealing with. And again, this is just a, a very quick way to get a, a very fast overview of what's going on in the data. Okay, 
Next, we have summary tools. So again, we'll load this up, summary tools, and again, um, we'll specify that we want the desk guru function from summary tools, and we put in the name of our data set here. Okay, so uh, this is a, a, a plain text summary like the other packages we looked at so far. And uh, as you can see, all the variables across the top and a range of uh, summary statistics uh, along this side. Something that's very good is the df summary function. And so this will produce uh, an, an HTML type file in the viewer on the right hand side. Um, so similar to this, but more of a, a visual report. So if we run that, um, we can make this larger so we can see what's going on. Okay, so here we have all the variables. We have a, a histogram as well, which is a very quick way of seeing what's going on. And then for the numeric variables, we have uh, our, our typical summary statistics. It also tells us how many distinct values and uh, how many missing or complete. Okay, we can do this by group as well. Um, this is a bit more clunky, but the, the syntax is here. So we'll save a new object called grouped um, and we'll sort it by um, group here. And we'll use the same function, the disk group function here, um, but just to split it by group. Okay, so this time we can see um, as it was before, very it's the same layout, but this time it's split it. So group one at the top and group two down here at the bottom. Okay, so the next package to mention is table one. So we'll load up table one here first. Now we're going to use the table, we're going to use the create table one function here. Um, and we're going to create a new object using this function. So the only thing that goes in here is uh, the name of the data that we'd like to have summarized. So we'll create this object. And then if we just run the name of this object, it should print to the console down below. And here we are. Okay, so we can see down here for the numeric variables, we have uh, mean and standard deviation quite simply. So this is a, a much more sparse uh, presentation than some of the uh, other ones we've looked at so far. It's also possible to specify uh, a grouping variable and we do that using the strata argument here. So it's the same as it was before. We specify which data set we'd like to have summarized and then we specify strata. We'll save this in a new object called tab grouped and we'll run that object again to make it appear here. Okay, so here we can see uh, it's stratified by group, group one and group two, and you can see how many are in each one. And it also presents the results of a t-test um, or whichever statistical test this happens to be. Um, and we have that for all the variables down here as well. Um, if you would like more information than merely uh, mean and standard deviation, you can use the summary command. So we can put this object into the summary command and run that. And if we scroll up to the right place, that will give us um, some more in-depth statistics. So for group one and group two, we've got uh, missing, we've got mean, standard deviation, median, quartiles, etc., etc. Okay. The thing I really like about this package is that it allows you to easily save this summary and export it to an Excel file. So the way we do that is using the print command. So what we're saying is that we'd like to print this table that we just created called tab grouped. And we'd like to have no spaces in between them, in between the different cells. And this will help when we uh, export it into Excel. Okay, so, and we're gonna save this in a new object called tab grouped save. Okay, um, so that's up there. And now we can use the write.csv function to write this into a new file, um, which we can give a name. So here I've just used file name.csv. Okay, and if we open this up in Excel, um, this is what we get. So we have um, group one and group two at the top here, and um, we have our summary statistics. So it's nicely formatted so that it's the mean and standard deviation in brackets. Um, obviously this requires a lot of editing to get it into APA format or whatever you use, um, but it's a, it's a good start. Okay, uh, nearly done. Um, there's a, a, a short one I'd like to mention, which is Skimmer. Um, this is quite a nice package. So this is to get a very quick overview of what's going on. So uh, we can run this. The main argument here is skim. And again, just the name of the data set. 
Okay, and what you'll notice about this is that it provides plain text histograms, which is quite cool. So we've got a, a range of summary statistics here, um, and uh, uh, quantiles, and then our nice histograms as well. Okay, so um, to summarize, um, these are the various packages that might be useful to you when you're computing uh, descriptive statistics in R. Um, I leave them all on this page, so if you want to pause this video and type them into R or make a note of them, um, that might be something that's useful. As I say, it, in the end it comes down to what you need to get out of your descriptive statistics, what you want to report, um, and also personal preference as to which package you prefer.